several people have asked, what about Christopher Hudson, the forerunner? And that's a good question because he is another really good example of why Seventh-day Adventists support abortion. He published a video with all sorts of false and misleading claims, so we are going to refute them with documented facts and evidence. But just in case you forget everything in this video, all you have to remember is this. When an Adventist, especially particularly in North America, says that they are pro-life, or when they say that abortion is murder, what they mean is that yes, killing a child is a violation of the Sixth Commandment, but being pro-choice is more important. What they mean is that yes, abortion is murder, but killing a child is ultimately an act of religious freedom, and therefore anyone who opposes abortion is an enemy of religious liberty they will try to frame the issue in such a way so that people are led to believe that yes, abortion is wrong, but that the government cannot legislate the Sixth Commandment because it interferes with worship. And recent videos by the Forerunner again prove this point, so let's break it down. For those who are unfamiliar, according to official church journals, it is a documented fact that the Adventist Church accepted abortion in 1970 for the purpose of making money in American hospitals. But because church leaders knew that lay members would not accept this, they purposely kept this a secret. Later, however, in the 1980s, evangelicals and Catholics began protesting Adventist support and practice of abortion on demand. And when these secrets got exposed in the internet national media like the Washington Post, church leaders became creative and began to claim that killing children is a sacred religious freedom that must be protected, that abortion is a matter of worship. Now, this is pure demonism, and Adventists are so serious about this satanic belief, or at least the Adventist leadership are so serious, that they appealed to the Supreme Court of the United States to defend killing children as a religious liberty. These are documented, irrefutable facts. Because they defined killing children as a religious freedom, and because the evangelicals and Catholics took such a strong stance, Adventists have ever since joined with the secular media and academia to slander and criticize them at every opportunity. However, the reality is that these Adventists are very fragile and brittle people. They cannot defend anything they say. They rely entirely upon fear porn or outrageous slander. In fact, in his video interview here with Frank Schaefer, evangelicals are described in the strongest, most inflammatory terms as racists and terrorists, and that their supposed dangerous threat to religious liberty is a result of their public opposition to abortion. This is because there are Ten Commandments. The first four are about our relationship to God, and the last six concern our relationship to our neighbors. The first four are specific to worship, and the last six are specific to social civil relationships. The government cannot legislate the first four, but the government does have the God-given authority and duty to legislate the last six. When you listen to Adventists talk about abortion, they often make very confusing, strange, or contradictory statements. But if you can just remember that they are trying to frame the issue or make the sixth commandment a matter of worship, then you can see what they are doing. The problem is that neither the forerunner nor any Adventist church leader or theologian in the entire world has ever produced even one shred of evidence why this is so. Why is killing children 30 seconds after they are born a crime, but 30 seconds before they are born is personal freedom? Even though $2 million has been offered for the Bible answer, neither the forerunner nor any other church leader will try to answer that question because they cannot. It's a lie. This entire framework that killing your child is a matter of, quote, choice is based entirely upon a fraud. Furthermore, and this video is proof that when Adventists talk about abortion, they do not speak directly in a straightforward manner, and they can't do so because they are not telling the truth. Instead, they speak indirectly using suggestion or smears or innuendo or the accusations of some pro-choice activist. This man here is Frank Schaefer, and the only reason Adventists Adventists promote what he says is because he is the son of the famous evangelical theologian 
Francis Schaeffer that was his father. To understand why Adventists don't like Francis Schaeffer and why they try to smear evangelicals, let's briefly review the history. Fact, research has been published of ancient records of abortion being prosecuted as a crime going as far back as the 13th century. For example, Rex versus Sharp in 1276, a um, husband was charged with a quote, man's death for killing the unborn child of his wife. Just a few years later in 1281, Rex versus Code, three men were convicted and imprisoned for the felony of killing an unborn child. The belief that abortion was a crime in common law remained consistent for centuries. Fact, in the 19th century, due to the advances in technology that number one, made surgery in general safer and therefore abortion, and number two, due to the discovery that life began at conception, the physicians of the American Medical Association, directed by Dr. Horatio Storer, led the successful physician's crusade to outlaw abortion in statutory law, and the Adventist pioneers, in their official journals, openly, unashamedly, and publicly supported and praised this anti-abortion legislation. Fact, the Advent Review and Sabbath Herald stated that the American medical profession have taken a noble stand. As guardians of human life, they are what? They are compelled to do so. Society owes them a debt of gratitude to who? Dr. Horatio Storer. By 1900, abortion was outlawed in every state of the union. Fast forward to the 1930s, 1940s, as documented here by historian Daniel Williams, it was primarily liberal or secular Jewish physicians who began to advocate for exceptions for legalized abortion. By the 1950s and 1960s, reforming abortion laws had become a very big issue, and importantly, there was already a very strong pro-life movement involving both Catholic and Protestants long before Roe versus Wade. Fact, during the 1960s, Dr. Bernard Nathanson was a practicing abortionist and Lawrence Later, both Jews, founded the National Association for the Repeal of Abortion Laws. They were the foremost leaders in the movement to make abortion legal. However, later after Nathanson converted and began to oppose abortion, he openly admitted that NARAL and others had used completely made up fictitious statistics about women dying from abortion in order to elicit sympathy for reform. The abortion lobby purposely used euphemisms and misleading language in order to dupe people into believing that abortion was necessary for a mother's quote health, but once Roe made this legal, abortion rates skyrocketed because this was the loophole allowing abortion on demand. The word health was defined so broadly as to mean any circumstance. Now, the Forerunners video would have you to believe several false claims, including number one, evangelicals didn't care about abortion, two, evangelical leaders supported it, and three, that they sought political power in order to trample religious liberty and bring in the dreaded Sunday law. Let's start with number one. Actually, a lot of evangelicals were either pro-choice or ambivalent to the issue before it happened. So. Okay, so a lot of evangelicals were either pro-choice or ambivalent to abortion before it became an issue. That is false. In the late 1960s, many Protestants, not all, definitely not all of them, but many Protestants, including many evangelicals, did support softening or liberalizing of abortion laws. But key point, this is the key. This was not for abortion on demand. This was for limited medical or what was called therapeutic circumstances. As evidence, a national survey from 1966 was published here. Most Americans favor liberalization of abortion laws. Legal abortions for women whose health was seriously endangered were favored by how much? By a whopping 71%. However, if the reason was only because the mother did not want the children, the approval dropped to only 18 and 15 percent, depending on whether the woman was or was not married. The overwhelming majority of Americans did not want abortion on demand. Notice this, Protestants tended to be more ready to permit legal abortions than Catholics, but, but, the differences were relatively what? Relatively small. Do you want to know where this was published? The New York Times. Not exactly the mouthpiece for evangelical values or the Christian rhyme. Right. and other surveys also came to the same conclusions. Now, did the Forerunners video point out any of these facts? 
No, of course not. One of the big mistakes that people make is looking back in time to the 1960s and 1970s from the perspective of our understanding that we have today. We today, we know that abortion on demand was legalized by Roe versus Wade and the companion case Doe versus Bolton through the loophole of a woman's health. But back in the 1960s and 1970s, most people had no idea about this. They didn't see that. They were being bombarded with lies and fraudulent statistics from the media and the abortion reform movement telling everyone that women were dying without legal abortion. However, once this was legalized and it became clear that Roe had opened the floodgates, then, then you see all of a sudden in the middle to the late 1970s, you see this huge increase in attention to and agitation about abortion, especially from evangelicals, which is not surprising since it matches the surveys from the 1960s. So it is false to claim that they did not care. This is why the Forerunners video uses another trick of deception by focusing in on just a few leaders. In the video, Schaefer claims that leadership supported abortion. Let's listen. It was evangelical leaders like Dr. Billy Graham, the evangelist, father of the right-wing activist Franklin Graham, Dr. Criswell, president of the Southern Baptist Convention, pastor of First Baptist in Dallas. Those guys in 1973, declared themselves as pro-choice. Mm. They believed that abortion was wrong, but should be legal. Mm. And I don't think many evangelicals and certainly even people on the left get that. Oh, Billy Graham and the president of the SBC were pro-choice. Guess what? The president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Neil Wilson, told the religious news service that Adventists lean towards abortion rather than against it. That we need abortion, read it for yourself, that we need abortion for problems of hunger and overpopulation. That Adventists don't oppose family planning, aka killing your children to control population. Now, anyone who has even the faintest idea of Adventist history and demographics knows full well that this absolutely in no way has ever represented Adventist thinking about abortion even in the USA. Everyone watching this video knows full well that if someone quoted Neil Wilson and said, see, Adventists support abortion for population control, everyone knows full well that that would constitute a gross misrepresentation of the church. You can easily go to any organization and find a minority who sets a bad example. That Forerunner's video can only find just two pro-choice leaders in no way proves that evangelicals as a whole supported abortion. The Southern Baptist Convention, or SBC, is the largest evangelical denomination, which at the time had approximately 13 million members. And that's just the SBC. With 22% of the population considering themselves as evangelical, you have at least 40 million people, many of whom opposed the changing of the law that now legalized killing children. And that's why the Forerunners video tries to zero in and limit the focus only to a few examples of pro-choice leaders. And further proof is what's called the conservative resurgence. Conservatives were sick and tired of the liberalizing of their church so, in 1979, in the SBC, they voted in a new president, Adrian Rogers, and one of the very first actions was to take a much more biblical stand on, guess what, on abortion, stating, quote, we favor appropriate legislation and or a constitutional amendment prohibiting abortion except to save the life of the mother, end quote, which is far, far more than the Adventist church has ever done. Simply because some liberal leaders had a position supporting abortion did not mean that evangelical Christians did not care. That claim is disgusting. They did in fact care very much, and that's why they threw out all of their liberal leadership. And that point is further proven in our own Adventist church. Just like the SBC, the overwhelming majority of Adventists worldwide, especially outside North America, are not brainwashed and do not support this horrible evil. The Americans brought this into the church to make money. The Americans covered this up. The Americans wrote the pro-abortion policies. The Americans have used their influence to continue to lie about this. And it was the Americans who falsely claimed the satanic teaching that killing little boys and girls is a religious freedom. The SBC, they never even went half that far. And what little support they did give was only for eight years. But Adventists have done this with out apology for over 50. 
Even until this day, we Adventists continue to teach in our official books published by the GC what Adventists believe. We teach in black and white that the unborn child is not a living human being until after they are born. Spend their time criticizing a few evangelicals for holding to this belief in the early 1970s, but this science-denying, Bible-denying, pagan, Egyptian, satanic, false teaching is still taught openly in our official books even until today. But do they criticize this? No, of course not. Just a few days ago, I published a video right here documenting another famous evangelical theologian, Dr. Bruce Waltke, who in 1968 claimed in Christianity Today, quote, God does not regard the fetus as a soul no matter how far gestation has progressed. The smear merchants take this and say, see, evangelicals didn't even believe that the unborn are human. However, what they constantly fail to point out is that Waltke himself, several years later, published in their Evangelical Society journal, admitting that, although I addressed myself to this problem several years ago, I would like to contribute once again to the ongoing discussion because why? What's the reason why? Because I have modified my position considerably since my earlier article. The fetus is human and therefore to be accorded the same protection to life granted every other human being. Feticide is murder. These smear merchants will constantly cite from the 1968 article, but never from any updated articles because they are desperate to give the impression that opposition to abortion is not sincere and has some sort of nefarious motives. And no surprise here, Frank Schaefer, of course, also repeats this smear. As I have demonstrated repeatedly in previous videos, when Adventists, especially in North America, publish anything about abortion, they like to use the timeline trick, ignore all history previous to 1973, and then zoom in and focus, on, focus in on just a few individuals, and then blow this up and extrapolate this to smear evangelicals. Historian Daniel Williams documents that by the time that abortion policy became a matter of political controversy, most Protestant denominations had no consistent theological position on the subject. That's definitely true also of Adventists, and there are historical reasons for this. Evangelicals remained on the sidelines because they were suspicious of Catholics and because they lacked a what? Lacked a clear theology of when human life began. In the 1970s, however, as people became aware of the fallout of Roe and because church leaders and scholars like Waltke and Norman Geisler and others began to study the topic more carefully and reverse their positions, there was a general awareness of awakening to the seriousness of this issue. But arguably one of the most influential people was Dr. Francis Schaeffer, who with his son Frank in the late 1970s, with the help of former Surgeon General Everett Koop, produced whatever happened to the human race. Dr. Jean Garten stated, as a result, there was a dramatic change in the abortion landscape. The powerful message of both the screen and printed versions of whatever happened to the human race educated and energized and up till then largely uninvolved constituency, the evangelical. Another very important name to know is Dr. Harold O.J. Brown. Adventists, especially in Forerunner's video, never mention his name, but Brown is arguably the most well-known evangelical to speak and take action on abortion long before Coop and Schaefer began their series. Dr. Brown had not one, not two, not three. He had four degrees from Harvard. Brown was already concerned about abortion before Roe was even decided, and as soon as the court made their ruling, Brown was an associate editor for the leading evangelical magazine, Christianity Today. And it was Dr. Brown who wrote the scathing rebuke in the February 16th issue, Abortion and the Court. Brown would continue to publicly attack Roe versus Wade, but even more importantly, he founded the Christian Action Council in what year? In 1975, which was later named CareNet, which to this day operates one of the most expansive and largest networks of pro-life pregnancy centers to help women in need. Many evangelicals were extremely concerned about abortion and go ahead and guess, try to guess, who helped and who was instrumental in founding of CareNet? Oh, look, it was Billy Graham. But does the Forerunners video mention this? Of course not. Dr. Harold O.J. Brown commenting on 
Francis Schaeffer's work, shown in churches, schools, and homes around the country, the film so thoroughly aroused viewers that the term evangelical has come to be synonymous with anti-abortion. Brown and others had already laid the groundwork by attacking Roe and founding the Christian Action Council, but it was Schaeffer's series that really provoked their response, so much so that following Schaeffer's work, by 1980, a Gallup poll showed that evangelical Protestants were more likely than either Catholics or mainline Protestants to oppose killing children. Adventist pioneers, they praised the noble work of making abortion illegal. They said society owes a debt of gratitude to these people, and Dr. Francis Schaeffer and others have continued this noble work. And because of their influence and the subsequent efforts of evangelicals, this great genocide has been resisted and multitudes of children have been saved from a cruel and violent death. But again, not only does Forerunner's video not mention any of this, but in a show of gross distortion, he manipulates Schaefer's words to make him look like some terrible enemy. I just made a video on this. In the year 1982, Dr. Schaefer gave a sermon titled A Christian Manifesto at the Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church in Florida. The forerunner cut one small quote out of the video and then inserted it into the context of evangelicals being labeled as racists and terrorists and enemies of religious liberty. So that you can see what he did, let's listen to the clip that Forerunner used. What is loyalty to Christ worth to you? What is loyalty to Christ worth to you? How much do you believe this is true? Why are you a Christian? Are you a Christian because for some lesser reason, or are you a Christian because you know this is the truth of reality? And then how much do you love the Lord Jesus Christ? How much are you willing to pay the price for loyalty to the Lord Jesus? We must absolutely set out to smash the lie of the new and novel concept of the separation of religion from the state, uh, which now most people hold, and which Christians have just bought a bill of goods. As I have documented and shown repeatedly over and over again, whenever Adventists, especially in North America, are talking about abortion, you have to go back and check their sources because, as we have seen repeatedly, they are notorious for lying and distortion and manipulation, false accusations, and this is another great example. Christopher Hudson, the forerunner, published a video where evangelicals are described as, in the most inflammatory terms, as racists and terrorists who pose a dangerous threat as a result of their opposition to abortion. And it is in this context of these vile accusations that the forerunner inserts this clip of Dr. Schaefer saying that the concept of separation of church and state is a lie that needs to be smashed. Now, that by itself might seem disturbing to the average person, but to an Adventist, that is some super scary beast of revelation demonic language. The big problem, however, is that this is not what he said. All of you should go back and listen to all of Dr. Schaefer's message where he is saying the opposite. He is not attacking freedom of religion. He is attacking the evolutionary, evolution-based humanist claims that the laws of society can be determined arbitrarily. And as proof, let's listen to some other quotes from the exact same sermon and listen to how different they are. And the second thing for the First Amendment was a, that the state would never interfere with religion. And that's all the meaning there was to the First Amendment. Just read Madison in the Spectator papers if you don't think so. Now with this we must emphasize, and I said it, but let me say it again. We do not want a theocracy. I personally am opposed to a theocracy. On this side of the New Testament, I do not believe this place for a theocracy till Jesus the King comes back. What we want is a return to real freedom and especially real freedom for all religions. Notice all religions, not just ourselves. Oh, look at that. The state should not interfere with religion. We don't want a theocracy. Freedom for all religions. Did the forerunner show any of those clips? No, of course not. In another disgusting display of Adventist smear tactics, the evangelicals are accused, again, of the most vile hypocrisy and described as dangerous terrorists and racists 
and Christopher Hudson manipulates his sermon to make him look as evil as possible. This is disgusting and it is despicable. Also notice that when he shows this clip, he doesn't even provide any source or reference. You notice that? You don't even know where that message came from. There's nothing in either the video or in the description or in any of the comments. He gives nothing. Anyways, everyone should listen to Dr. Schaefer's message because you can hear him for yourself argue how humanist evolutionary ideology is used to legalize killing children by abortion and then once legalized, these ideologues then claim that nobody else can oppose abortion because according to them, to do so is to make a religious claim which is absurd because the reason that abortion was made illegal to begin with is because of the scientific, medical, biological reality, the fact that the unborn are living human children. The great irony is that the evangelicals of the 1970s were using the exact same arguments against abortion that the physicians of the American Medical Association used in the 19th century. The unborn are children and it's wrong to kill children. Furthermore, secular humanism is itself a religion and these pagan cult members want to justify murdering children and then turn around and tell science and every other religion that nobody can oppose them and it is this fact that Dr. Schaefer is rightly, is correctly opposing, but the Forerunner's video and his manipulation would lead you to believe the exact opposite. Here is an important rule to remember. If somebody has to deceive you into accepting their views, it's because their views aren't good and cannot be defended. The sad reality is that the Adventist church has joined with secular humanism and used the exact same false arguments and because they have no science and no history and no medicine and certainly no scripture, the Adventists have for decades used every means to slander and manipulate and deceive. They have lied. They have, they're on record repeatedly lying and they continue Continue to lie and perpetuate this satanic belief even until today. And as I already stated at the beginning of this video, this is why Adventists can never speak in a straightforward, honest, or direct manner. They cannot defend their false claims, so they use innuendo, suggestion, and slimy smear tactics. And if you watch the video, you yourself can hear the forerunner try to lead Frank into admitting that the evangelicals wanted to enact a federal mandate or law to compel Sunday worship. But typical of Adventist fear porn, he can't provide, they can't provide a single piece of evidence. He asks him, quote, they were thinking of doing a federal mandate for Sunday worship and without a shred of evidence, he says, oh yeah. What makes this so absurd is that the Adventist church was literally founded and organized in the middle of a nationwide campaign to make abortion illegal. And not one, not even one church pioneer or leader warned that this was a threat to religious liberty. Ellen White was surrounded by efforts to outlaw abortion. In every state, she was surrounded by her own co-workers publicly voicing support for this in the official journals of the church. And we don't even have, we don't even have one word of concern from her that this was in any way a threat to religious liberty or that it would bring in the dreaded Sunday law or that this was a movement of extremist, racist terrorists who want to bring in a dangerous theocracy. All of this irrational, illogical, unbiblical, hyperventilating fear porn that we hear today is the direct result of the Adventist church compromising and embracing the humanistic demonic death cult and their satanic ideology. And that is exactly why the satanic temple today, when arguing to keep abortion legal, they use the exact same arguments. The Adventist church and the satanic temple share the exact same demonic philosophy that killing innocent little boys and girls is a matter of religious freedom. Furthermore, I contacted Frank Schaefer and I asked him about this claim and I asked for the references and evidence that evangelicals favored a Sunday law and strangely, he didn't respond. So I contacted him again and offered him money. I said, hey, I will reimburse you for your efforts and time to send me this evidence and even after after offering him money, guess what? He still didn't respond. Neither of them can offer any evidence. Imagine that. 
Also, anyone who is familiar with this history knows that if you are interviewing Frank Schaefer, you must be really desperate because among his other falsehoods, Frank repeats the claim that in the 17th and 18th centuries, abortion in the early stages of pregnancy was common, not true, and generally not considered immoral or murderous, not true. To realize how dumb this is, the precursor to the pregnancy test was not even developed until 1927. And to do this, check this out, they would take a woman's urine and inject it into a mouse or frog or rabbit and then they would dissect the animal to see how it reacted to the woman's urine or pee to guess if she was pregnant or not. This is why the euphemism, the rabbit died, meant that someone was pregnant. However, as you can probably guess, these tests were expensive, time consuming and not always accurate. Well, you don't say. The closest thing to the modern day pregnancy test was not even developed until 1969. Frank Schaefer, like other propagandists, claim that abortion in early pregnancy was not considered wrong, but this is because they had no way of knowing that they were even pregnant, and the science that a new human being began at conception was not even well known until the 19th century, but as soon as the science was known, the American Medical Association, not Jerry Falwell, not Francis Schaefer, the physicians began their crusade to make all abortion illegal. This claim, repeated by Frank, is as dumb as saying that people in the 17th and 18th centuries, they didn't eat microwave popcorn. Well, of course, because they didn't have microwave popcorn. And worse, Frank openly claims in this video, you can hear him out of his own mouth, to be in favor of legal abortion. If women want to violently torture and dismember their own children, he thinks this should be legal. And the forerunner doesn't challenge him at all. He's always talking tough how the truth is the truth, whether you like it or not, but he didn't dare challenge Frank. You notice that? This is so obvious that he used the comment section to claim this is not intended to express what may or may not be by viewpoints, nor was it intended to debate his views. However, what it was and what it was intended to be was a conversation. For those who are unaware, the people in the Adventist church who try to frame abortion as a religious freedom, this is one of their favorite tried and true tactics. Just like the official 1992 position of the church claim that we need to have ongoing discussion of the moral questions associated with abortion. They cannot defend anything that they say, so they try to frame the issue as something that requires more discussion and conversation. The problem is that this quote conversation is full of the most vile accusations false statements and claims that murdering children should be legal. And to make it worse, just two days later, he posts another video claiming that abortion is murder, which only causes more problems because, take a moment to think this through. If abortion is murder, then the evangelicals and Dr. Francis Schaefer have done a very noble work of standing up for the Sixth Commandment. If abortion is murder, then the evangelical pro-life movement have been, in fact, preaching the gospel and affirming the biblical truth that the government has the God-given authority and obligation to protect children, which means that everything that Frank said is a lie. Furthermore, if this was just a quote, conversation, then why insert the manipulated video of Dr. Schaefer? I believe we know why. Out of an hour-long sermon, the forerunner just happened to insert that one quote when separation of church and state is condemned as a lie. As I said at the beginning of this video and in other videos, when Advent say that abortion is murder, they mean that yes, this is a violation of the Sixth Commandment, but choice is more important. Government cannot tell people not to kill little children. This is another great example of the satanic tactic of dualism. And listen, listen carefully to how he ends his video. It's the act of murder. And please, I have no political agenda. Please, I have no political agenda. But if killing children is murder and murdering children is legal, then what's wrong with efforts to make this illegal? You notice how brave, you notice how bold Adventists are about slavery. They are not afraid at all of being seen as political about slavery, but on abortion, they are so quick to reassure everyone, please, please, I'm not being political. And of course, of course, 
Edward Allred, the most notorious abortionist who boasted of killing over 250,000 children. He became famous for openly targeting minority children for violence, specifically blacks and Hispanic immigrants. Notice what he told the newspaper. Population control is too important to be stopped by those pro-life types. Take the influx of Hispanic what? Of immigrants. Their lack of respect for democracy and social order is frightening. I hope I can do something to stem that tide. I'd set up a what? I'd set up a clinic in Mexico for free if I could. Maybe one in Calexico would help. The survival of our society could be at stake. When a sullen black woman can have a baby and get on welfare, it's time to stop. He said that having babies for welfare is the only industry for blacks. So his solution was to kill them before they were born. Several years ago, evangelicals and Catholics and other Christian denominations were horrified to see Adventist institutions name part of their university after Allred. They literally put up plaques on the wall saying that Allred will forever, read it for yourself, will forever be an example to our students. He is their inspiration for their economic philosophy. The flagship medical center for the Worldwide Adventist Church has honored him as a distinguished ambassador for the healing ministry of Jesus. This man publicly boasted, he boasted of violently killing more children than anyone else, and he specifically targeted minorities. And you notice something? You notice that black Adventists in North America, like the Forerunner, like Eric Walsh, like Michael Coleman, Ivor Myers, and of course Oakwood, etc. Black Adventists will never complain about this. You notice that? They will talk tough about the fourth commandment all day long, but never about the sixth commandment. They won't complain about Allred because they know that if they do so, they will become unpopular. Allred is very, very big evidence because Allred, that has nothing to do with politics or the government or legislation. This is literally within their own church and they still won't complain, which is very strong proof because if as they claim that abortion is murder, you would hear them screaming in protest about this, but instead we hear nothing or you hear, please, please, I'm not being political, please, please. They will constantly condemn the problems in other churches constantly condemn Rome and the evangelicals, but they don't condemn Allred because they are afraid. They are very afraid of becoming unpopular. Other churches teach that Sunday is holy and they will condemn them all day long. But when their own church teaches that murdering children is a matter of religious sacred worship, they say nothing because they are very afraid. Anyways, that's enough for this video. Definitely, definitely a lot more, but we have addressed the main points. Unlike the forerunner, I will actually provide the links down below for Dr. Schaefer's message so that you can go judge for yourself. His book, A Christian Manifesto, is definitely worth reading. You'll want to check that out. You'll find important statements like many of the denominations controlled by liberal theology have come out publicly and strongly in favor of abortion. You can read that book for free at archive.org. Links down below. Also, Defenders of the Unborn, the pro-life movement before Roe vs. Wade. Excellent book. However, before this book was published, the author had previously published like a summary in this excellent paper here, The Partisan Trajectory of the American pro-life movement, how a liberal Catholic campaign became a conservative evangelical cause. He ignores, unfortunately, the 19th century history, but anyways, it's still pretty much a good paper. Plenty of links down below. Check him out. Thank you for watching.